I've used about 60% water, 20% dishwashing liquid and 20% of glycerin. The answer is because the soap bubbles were not really stable. I think when we have a look at this footage, it becomes pretty clear. Therefore, I used a straw. You can directly create the soap bubble with the straw and then place the bubble together with the straw at the position you want or just create it from a table, for example. The overall star effect only appeared at real cold temperatures. And with real cold, I mean like minus 20 degrees. At higher temperatures, it also works. But then you have to cool down the mixture, for example, just by adding a little bit of snow to the mixture and it will also work. That's actually pretty simple. You just need to position a flashlight, a torch, right behind the soap bubble so that the soap bubble is in the middle between the camera and the torch. I got two tips for you to slow down the process. The first is create big bubbles. Because the air inside the bubble is warm, it will slow down the freezing process when you make bigger bubbles. And the second one is use more dishwashing liquid and more glycerin. The biggest problem is wind. There were nights where I took images and video footage for like two or three hours and I had almost to delete everything because of shaky images or the bubbles bursted too fast. My favorite temperature was minus 20 degrees because then this dancing star effect and appeared and yeah, I just had so much fun with all those little stars. So I think minus 20 or below is a pretty good temperature to work with. You could reduce the amount of dishwashing liquid and glycerin. Or, as I mentioned, add snow to the mixture, cool it down, then the freezing process will be supported by the lower temperatures. I've used the 90mm of Sony together with my A6300 and APC camera. And for the extreme macro shots, I've also added the Reynolds DCR250 to yeah, capture the motion of the dendrites growing on the soap bubbles. Oh, and I've also used a simple LED torch and a tripod. When you plan to take images at really cold temperatures, the freezing process will be so fast that there might be not enough time to focus. So my tip for you is make a bubble, wait till it froze and then focus manually. Try to remember the size of the bubble and then create a new one so that you set the focus before creating the bubble so that it is already everything in focus when this bubble starts to freeze. And therefore I'd also recommend to close down the aperture a little bit. I have used f16 so then the chance is pretty high that you get only in focus footage. I have used a shutter speed of a 25th of the second. I got a little bit of motion blur, but for me that was fine. For the images, I have used a shutter speed of 100 to 1 200th of a second, or I used long exposure times when the soap bubble was almost frozen. It really depends on the mixture and the temperatures. At minus 20 degrees, it was like 5 to 10 seconds till the soap bubble was completely frozen, so there was not much time to focus. When I started at nights where we just had minus five degrees, it took up to three minutes till the complete soap bubble was frozen. No, when there's no wind around, the soap bubble actually never pops. I have taken some footage the day after I have filmed the freezing process. Incredible. When you plan to photograph the small dendrites growing on the soap bubbles, I do recommend to use a macro lens. When you wanna go as close as you've seen in the video footage, I'd also recommend to add a Raynox DCR250 or use a macro lens with a magnification of at least 2 to 1. No, I think when you start, a simple torch will work great. When you position it pretty close from the side, you can shoot at f16 and pretty low aperture. Or just place it behind as you've just seen to reveal all those nice colors. Well, did I miss anything? Do you have any open questions? If yes, feel free to leave a comment below and I'm gonna help you with your frozen soap bubble photography project. 
If you enjoyed this content, maybe you want to check out my YouTube channel because I have some other quite similar content. For example, I'm going to show you how to photograph snowflakes.